Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, that was a really awesome test to take. I actually had never taken the test. I just took the test. So Dan had taken and I thought that was really interesting and a valuable thing for us to see. And I hope you found it valuable. And maybe you were thinking, I really don't have the emotional energy to take a whole test. It actually was really quick and really easy to do. So I encourage you to do it. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much in here, but I want to start with a basic concept that I think reinforces this idea that what we just did was a godly concept, mm -hmm. something that God wants us to do. And I want to reinforce that with the scripture here. This is from 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Now mm -hmm. that word considerate, you could take it to mean polite, you know, be polite, right? But what's uh, translated in other translations is to be um, understanding hmm. or, or, or to be a compassionately knowing toward your wife. And I think that's not just husband and wife, but for both ways, that God wants us to understand our spouse, yeah. right? To be considerate, to take time to consider them, how they think, how they perceive the world, how they're different from you, how they're processing emotionally different from mm -hmm. you. And listen to what it says at the end of this verse, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Wow. God is going so far as to say, hey, if you don't take time to be considerate of your spouse, to really make an effort to know them and understand them, Things are not okay between you and me, buddy, right? Like, <laughs> you know, if we want to have a, a dynamic prayer life with God really hearing us when we press in, His call to us is to understand, to be considerate of our spouse, right? So maybe the Enneagram thing didn't uh, resound with you. That's not the point. The point is that we take time to consider and, and understand one another. And that can happen a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. Conversation. Right. Uh, like we talked about earlier in the week, praying together, right? Right. Listening, uh, asking um, insightful questions. Hey, what did you mean by that? Um, I'd like to know why you reacted in that way. I want to understand you. Mm -hmm. It's a godly concept. But we hope the Enneagram was beneficial for you. How did you enjoy taking it? Yeah, I thought it was really awesome just to kind of see our numbers and, um, you know, I, we would love to hear what your numbers were. So even post in the chat, you know, we are a two and an eight or whatever. Um, for, for me and Dan, we are both very high in very similar categories. So I am a high nine and he's just right below me in the nine. I also fall in the category of a seven. He falls in a seven and I have a little bit of the two as well. So kind of looking through that and, you know, even really reading some, some on your categories that were just slightly under, go ahead and match up the differences because we kind of found out that on different days, you know, maybe when I'm at home, I'm more of a nine. When I am in front of a crowd, then I'm more of a seven, enthusiastic and, and the life of the party. So we have different ways of relating um, in our different environments. And I just thought that was so interesting. So this really is a test for you and your spouse. Go out to a coffee shop or really get away for a little bit and maybe even print out some of those papers or click on all of those highlighted buttons there's it's really kind of a maze when you get into that Enneagram test and kind of look through some of those details and really explore like Dan's saying really try to understand your spouse um, and when you come to that understanding you're able to bless them better you're able to love them well I mean you're able also to kind of be aware of the words that you're speaking to know you know what this really is a button for him like it might be super easy for me just to say it out and it doesn't affect me but I know that it really affects his personality so this is um, this test really reveals how to get to know each other and know each other well yeah, and there's so much in here maybe you've heard of the Enneagram or done some study on the Enneagram. If you're new to it, I want to just show you the basic idea. Uh, and I'm just holding up this diagram to kind of show you uh, the inner workings. Now, I could probably teach for an hour about this and really mm -hmm. just scratch the surface. But one thing I want to highlight is, uh, let's take um, that nine, for example. 
there's little arrows in this diagram. Now the diagram looks a little strange, looks a little confusing, but the arrow is called the stress arrow. Right. So one of the things that I think is unique about this personality assessment versus others is it shows you when you are under stress, mm. what you're gonna tend to do. And this is really interesting. So for the nine, mm -hmm. when they are stressed out, they're gonna tend toward the negative qualities of a six, the wow. loyal skeptic, right? Yep. Whereas when they're on a growth pattern and they're feeling good and feeling confident, they're gonna tend toward the positive qualities of the three. And so those are all uh, interconnected. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, seven, we were talking about this, when they're under stress, they're gonna become the perfectionist a little bit, but the negative side mm. of those things. And, and, and so they're all interconnected. Right. One thing I wanna reassure you, this looks a little weird. It looks like a dream catcher or a pentagram <laughs> or something like this. This is not a new age thing. It's right. not a, a, a weird arrows. cult uh, <laughs> thing. In fact, uh, one resource that we want to point you to is a Christian book called Becoming Us, using the Enneagram to create a gospel-centered marriage. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a book by Christian authors who unpack the Enneagram all the way through and talk about what different marriage relationships look like in that. We gave you the free resources online. Use those, uh, dig into those. We encourage you to do that. There's lots of good stuff in there. Even if you don't sign up for anything, maybe you saw that you could pay something and get a more complete report. You don't need to do that, but you're welcome to do that if you want. Mm -hmm. But this resource uh, is, is really good, so much so, we're gonna give it away. Yeah, uh, so awesome. the way that you can uh, get that book is uh, tomorrow night's theme is dessert night. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So here's what you do for dessert night. Bake something together if that's your thing. Yeah. Or if it's not, go to the store and pick out a really cool looking dessert. I like- Trader Joe's. Yeah, Trader Joe's has some yes. cool desserts. You can put them on a plate real nice. Post a picture of your dessert or of you eating them. Maybe just you sitting on the couch with chocolate all over your face. That's up to you. And we're just going to pick a fun or creative picture there and give that book away mm -hmm. uh, so that you can, you can have it. But I encourage anybody who's interested in more of this, continue digging in and maybe grab that book for yourself. I know you can check it out at the library if you're super cheap like me. I don't mm -hmm. know if uh, Cheap Guy was one of these, but it probably <laughs> would have. I actually already downloaded the ebook from the King County Library and have been reading it. So uh, that, that's out there too. Yeah. But hey, we want to encourage you, keep on this quest of yeah. understanding your spouse. You know, God brought the two of you together for a reason. He didn't drop your spouse out of heaven. He didn't, uh, you know, <laughs> d drop, drop some, some cosmic dust to make you fall in love, but you've chosen each other. Right. And therefore you've got a commitment under God, something that God has done. He has married you. Uh, this is kind of a cool concept I talk about with, with couples who I do their wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, when, a, when the pastor does your wedding, he's called the officiant. And you know, the officiant, what that means is the pastor doesn't marry you. He officiates you being married. It's God that marries you. Right. So when you got married, God did a miracle. He joined you together. He married you. The government didn't marry you when you signed that little thing and mailed it in. The pastor didn't marry you when he said you may kiss the bride. God married mm. you. So as an act of worship to God, in appreciation of something he did, really invest in your spouse. Yeah. Be thankful for that miracle that God has done in you and be understanding mm -hmm. of the other. If you've got questions or I've left anything out, we've left anything out about the Enneagram, you want more information about that resource, comment in, drop in on the East Street uh, Marriage Week Facebook group or send an email to me at groups at eastridgetoday.com. We hope you keep building this. Yeah, you know, one thing I just wanted to add too to that is, you know, maybe um, in your marriage you feel like you're always coming home uh, stressed or your spouse is stressed and you find, you know, you find that tension with the negative side of that personality. And, you know, once you take this test or when you really dive into it, like Dan was saying, um, you know, it can make you as the spouse want to take stress off of your spouse even more so that you can uncover the bright side of their personality. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just even as we're in this marriage week and we're finishing out and we're headed toward date night and all of those things, this is a time for you to be able to take off the stresses 
of your spouse, to make a way for them to shine brightly, to be the upside of their personality, and to get to know them. So I just want you to know this cultivating of your marriage is making a difference, and it happens with little, what seems like insignificant things, little bit at a time. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at 7.15. And just a reminder, Friday night is date night. So mm -hmm. if you need to get a babysitter, you need to block out the time. Hopefully you've blocked out the time for right. marriage week. Uh, but it's going to be date night. Join us tomorrow night. We're going to talk about that and, and equip you with some things to do to make it a great Friday night. God bless you, Eastridge, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.